So for me, blockchain is a new paradigm of storing, sharing, and consuming data. So uh, it, it doesn't have to be necessarily a different type of database. Um, it's a different paradigm of data. It doesn't also exclude a database as well. Outside my side with your breaking news, but nothing to worry about. This is actually for real, but it happened uh, a while ago. It happened in, uh, on 20th, uh, 28th of May 2011. You may remember this news. Um, it was on BBC and it was on, uh, on a lot of media. So Germany turned die from E. coli infected cucumbers from Spain. It was a big thing because um, it disrupted a lot of, you know, the economies, countries and, uh, and so on. But let, let's just start at the beginning. It doesn't, doesn't start on 28th of May. It started actually on 1st of May. On 1st of May, when, when German health authorities uh, reported an unusual case of uh, E. coli in Germany. Um, by 16th of May, uh, they were reporting 100 cases a week. Just to, to kind of understand why that was unusual. Um, normally, E. coli, is, yeah, it happens in, in, in Western countries, about 200 cases a year in the UK, Germany, France, and so on. In here, they had 100 cases a week, so something was fundamentally going wrong. And they couldn't really figure out what, what, what's happening. So, on 19th of May, um, France reported 15 cases, similar cases, in, uh, in Bordeaux. And what was really interesting about these 15 cases is they were very similar to German cases, but none of the French uh, people actually traveled to Germany. So although it was the same disease, it was unrelated geographically. So that, that kind of confuses people even more. On 22nd of May, there were 15 European countries reporting kind of same similar uh, 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 symptoms, including the UK. Um, and on 26th of May, going back to our breaking news, uh, German authority officially declared that they have a suspect, it's probably cucumbers from Spain. Um, what happens next is um, uh, uh, a few days later, European Commission said, yep, we identified the, farm, uh, the, the greenhouses in Spain, we closed them, nothing to worry about, everything is under control. In fact, we closed the whole Spain. They are not uh, allowed to export any uh, uh, fruits and veggies. Um, actually, it was deeper than that. None of the countries were exporting, even uh, countries like um, outside of the European Union. Uh, Russia would not actually uh, accept any fruits, vegetables in any of European countries. Later, on 29th of, uh, 29th of June, they finally identified that there is a, a what's the connection between the 15 cases in France and the cases in Germany. And it was nothing to do with cucumbers. It was... Um, related to the seeds imported a few years ago from Egypt. By 21st of July, we had 3,842 cases, and unfortunately we had 53 deaths in, uh, uh, in Europe. Most of them uh, happened in Germany. So, just, just looking at this story, I, I promise there is a link to blockchain. It will be sooner or later. But kind of going backwards to what I said and, and looking at the timeline. So it started somewhere in May and ended, um, ended somewhere in the, in the beginning of August, end of July. That's three months. That's approximately 80 to 90 days. Okay. And during these 80, 90 days, what, did, what, what do we have? We have uh, 53 lost lives. Uh, we have uh, almost 4,000 uh, uh, cases uh, uh, registered. Registered, unregistered could be even more. Um, we had um, almost three billion dollars in human losses. Uh, now that doesn't mean just that, that could be anything: sick days, antibiotics, visits to GPs, everything related to to to, to human resource. Um, we had uh, about four hundred million uh, dollars uh, losses uh, in uh, farmers reported weekly during this period of time. 
And obviously European Union had to compensate something to the, to the farmers and especially Spain, which actually Spain refused to, to, to receive this money, they thought it's too little, uh, about 200 million uh, uh, dollars. So if you add this up, I mean, and I don't know how you can count the, the, the first line, probably it's un uncountable in, in money-wise, but if you're putting all this together, it's a big impact. It's a big impact. For, for us sitting in this room, we may think, well, maybe it didn't really affect us, but a lot of people were affected by, by these three months of events. So why, 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 why did we have it? So if we go to the uh, next slide, why it took three months? Why it took three months to trace? Why did they think it's cucumbers from Spain? Or, or why uh, uh, none of other countries outside of the European Union didn't want to buy uh, European Union products? Um, or even countries within the European Union, they didn't want to trade with each other. They, they were locking the, the border. And I remember that news, which we can probably still find when um, UK closed the border at some point for, for products from Germany. Uh, the, the reason is very simple. You can think about the supply chain uh, in the food industry. You have your farmers from, from the farmer's gate. You have the transport and logistic companies. We have storage. You have the food transformation factories where either it's packaged or cooked or, or you know, it goes for a, um, for, for a transformation process. It's transported again, it's distributed, it goes to retail, so it goes to the export. This is a very short uh, supply chain and the reality is even longer than that. Okay, so we have hundreds of companies here, we have hundreds of companies here, we have hundreds of companies here, here and here, right? And the process is, uh, is longer, as I said. Each of these companies will have its own ERP, CRM, database, uh, Excel files, emails, and so on and so on. So we have lots of data everywhere. Now, these are conventional databases, or they could be other forms of, of, of data storage. And it's traceable, it's possible to trace. You, you just go from the retail and you just go one by one and you can trace all the way to the farm. It takes about three months and lots of resources to do it, as the uh, 2011 case uh, proved. Why it takes time? It, it just physically takes time. Can you imagine you go to, to, to Tesco, uh, an investigator goes to Tesco and says, can we look in your database? Can we look at your transactions? and says, yeah, well, the CTO is on holiday, can you come back in two weeks? Yeah, that's going, what's going to happen. And you replicate this hundreds of times. You try to, to find out uh, 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 what's happening. So the question is, is there any other ways? How can we make the whole things faster? How can we uh, make things safer? How, is, is there any way of sharing the data in one shape or another? Um, and blockchain could be an answer. If we go to the next slide. Um, Blockchain could be an answer because we can suddenly start uh, be able to trace um, absolutely all sorts of information. It doesn't have to be um, um, the, the beauty of blockchain is you can actually store in each block um, a unstructured type of information. We can um, it's almost like instructions, um, and we can start tracing from from what we plant, um, what we spray. Um, how we harvest, uh, what kind of machinery do we use for ha harvesting, what kind of, uh, how much fuel you use for harvesting, and so on and so on. So all that stuff could be actually recorded. Now there's another discussion, are we going to share this or not? That's a totally different discussion. That's a, that's a technical solution which, which uh, um, <coughs> we as engineers will solve it later. But that's the concept of it. Now what's really interesting about this, we can trace it back we can replay, you can go back and forward as many times as you want because it's there. It's like a, it's like a, um, like a, a, a cassette player. You, you've got it, you've got a movie and you can go back forward and you can replay as many times as you want. That opens us to completely next, next level to understanding data because we can now apply even artificial intelligence and machine learning on a completely different level because we are not reading the data, we're reading the precedents, we're reading the context, we understand what other things happened. Because when we spray here, we can also record the, um, uh, the weather conditions. We can actually record what kind of uh, fuel was used, where the fuel was bought from, and so on and so on. So suddenly we get to a completely different level of, uh, of uh, understanding and storing information in a contextual level. So this presentation here, we actually were 
using the uh, uh, blockchain technology. In this particular case, what I'm going to show you, it's uh, uh, Ethereum. And we've been researching this for different cases, and one being supply chain, uh, but we also equally uh, uh, do some other researches in, in other industries, which I'll mention later. Uh, and the idea behind this was, okay, well, if we're using one of these, which is a scanner, which you, you have at the uh, till, and as we scan a product, is it possible to trace it back to, uh, to the origin, and how long will it take? Is it going to be three months, or is it going to be a few seconds, or, or a, few, a few minutes? So we simulated the 2011 case, uh, obviously on a smaller scale, because we just didn't have uh, enough time and, and capacity. So we get a search button, we scan a barcode of a product, When that goes into the, uh, the chain, there, is a, um, there are tools associated with this. We've got analytics. We can have um, uh, you know, conventional databases, which I mean, could be called operational databases and so on. So there are tools around it, but fundamentally the data is in the blockchain. As I you can see here, we have uh, transactions, we have quantities. Um, everything is uh, obviously could be anonymized, could be open. It's, it's again, it's, it's a technical decision which we can uh, uh, sort out later. Uh, but you can see exactly what was happening and who was trading with who and how that things uh, evolved all the way to me here buying some apples. More than that, I can, we can go to each of these nodes and look at the metadata. So in this particular case, I can actually see that type of transaction, what, I, what metadata that transaction actually had. And this is what I was explaining. We can record more data than we need because we don't know what we don't know. And we don't know what kind of information we may need tomorrow. So we might as well record it today. In a similar way with uh, 2011, E. coli case. Nobody knew that an outbreak will happen and it will be on 1st of, uh, of May 2011. But if we would have had all this data in a you know, structured way, we could have kind of go backwards, read it, understand and come up with a solution. So a lot of people are talking about supply chain. That's quite uh, usual. Um, there's a lot of conferences. Uh, probably it's the, it's the easiest way to understand blockchain and supply chain. That it doesn't have to be just in supply chain. It could be in education. So we've done some work in education, which uh, which I can uh, explain uh, later. Or you know, if you have any questions, you can approach me. Uh, healthcare is a, is a very interesting uh, uh, one. We are working on a proof of concept for one of our customer, uh, implementing blockchain in a healthcare by recording and 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 making sure we have the. Again, the understanding of the context when we'll come to, to clinical trials. Because very often what happens is we, we, we wouldn't... Um, it, it, the things is, is um, you want to understand the context, you want to understand the, the, the longer uh, uh, chain of events to understand exactly if, if uh, something is working or is not working. As I said, artificial intelligence suddenly we have more than just data. We have instructions, we have the context. Um, we don't have a data log, we don't have just numbers. It's like uh, looking at the exchange rate. We don't know the, the pound or a euro or dollar went up and down. We understand why it went up and down. So that gives artificial intelligence completely different level of understanding the, the context we're living in today. Finance, um, Charles mentioned about finance. Charities. Um, I think it's very interesting. Uh, a lot of discussion we're having with a few charities now. Uh, real estate uh, and the whole thing about uh, uh, d imp implementing blockchain in uh, develop developing countries where corruption is high. So suddenly there is n there is no this, the paper doesn't exist. The deed doesn't exist. It's all electronic and it's you know it, it cannot be replaced. Um, Insurance, so we are in, uh, in a few discussions with uh, uh, some insurance companies doing some proof of courses for them and so on. So it, it's, as, as a technologist, as, a, as an engineer, I'm, I'm getting really excited that this can go on and on. Um, so what's the future? Do we have a future or not? 
my guess is as good as yours. I, I've got no idea. I, I like it. I'm getting excited, but it doesn't mean that, that blockchain will be the future. Um, but I'll, I'll just show you a few things which, which are happening today because um, the future is something which happens today, but we don't know yet. So what's going on today with, with big companies uh, is we have Microsoft uh, have been investing in blockchain. So we now have a blockchain um, workbench as a service in, in Windows uh, Azure and on the cloud. We have Amazon asking for partners to implement blockchain um, technologies, welcoming proposals for Amazon Web Services. We have um, Oracle, um, which they call uh, blockchain cloud services. We have IBM. Fantastic. We've been playing with IBM technologies. Really interesting, really good, really powerful. And these are the software companies. And you can think, OK, what else can we have there? Uh, and yeah, we have even hardware companies. Even Intel now is developing um, you know, hardware to, to uh, deal with blockchain in a faster way, you know, in a more efficient way, and so on. So up to you to decide if, uh, if blockchain has a future or not. Um, meanwhile, we're getting excited with technology, and we're just uh, uh, playing with it. It's, it's good. Thank you very much. <laughs>